Today we are going to make an ocean painting. Hi guys, Joanne from Art Resin here and today I have artist Rebecca Brianso with me. Rebecca creates the most beautiful ocean abstract landscapes. And Rebecca, what are you going to be showing us today? Uh, today we are going to make little micro versions of this large piece behind us. And I have a canvas that is reminiscent of a porthole in a boat. And then I have this square canvas for you. It's a bit raised on the sides. It might be a bit challenging, but as far as I know, you're up for the challenge. I am. I can't wait to learn from you. <laughs> Great. Good. So we have all our materials laid out here. Do you want to walk us through them? Yes, so here I have the wooden canvases and we have primed them out with gesso. And we've done about three coats at this point just so we get the grains out of the perspective. You don't want to see the wood grains and you just want like a nice clean backdrop so that the resin pigment can really pick up and stand out. Perfect. Now, can you use um, acrylic paint if you don't have gesso? Yeah, absolutely you can. You can also use white house paint, um, wall paint, as long as it's matte, and as long as it covers up your grains. Okay, awesome. And then uh, we're using wooden panels here, but if you didn't have a wood panel, can you use a stretch canvas or a canvas board? You can use a canvas. I would not I would say up to this size maximum. I believe this is a 12 by 12. Yes. And I personally, most all my canvases are wood even if it's small. Okay. I like its backbone and its strength to marry with art resin. Yeah, the weight of art resin. You yeah, absolutely. It, right? mm -hmm. okay. So we have our art resin already measured and mixed. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So equal amounts of resin and hardener by volume. Um, and we mixed it up and we poured it into separate cups, one for each color, right? Yeah, exactly. And then we have our pigments. We've already mixed out our sand color and we've mixed out our white for the waves. Mm -hmm. And as well, we have under here a little surprise. This is our little um, feet that we're using to hold up my canvas because I enjoy paintings when the art is rolled over the sides and everyone has their own preference. Some people like a complete solid color on the side, like white or black, but I just love seeing the water kind of flow over to the sides and then drip. And as well, we have our trusty blowtorch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did want to note, we are using clear plastic cups. And the reason for the clear is because we want to see the richness of our colors. It's really important to see what we're working with and then what we're going to be pouring. We have toothpicks mm -hmm. to get the impossibles out. Right. <laughs> we all know what that means if you're working with resin. And we have our level to make sure that our canvases are nice and level because as much as we want the ocean to flow, we don't want it to flow right off right. the canvas. <laughs> and this one here. Great. That's good too. Great. And as well, we have a blow dryer, and what the blow dryer will do is just basically take our beautiful white pigment and it will break it out and make it look like a wave, and it will add some magical sea foam and some crashing effects. So, beautiful. really looking forward to this. I am too. And last but not least, our work surface is covered with vinyl just to catch any of those drips, right? Yeah, and then once they call. cure the next day, you can just peel them right off. Yeah, and you can reuse the drips into other art pieces. It's just really up to your creativity. The possibilities are endless. Amazing. Well, yeah. let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna move these out of our way so we can focus on the water. So you can use um, several different colorants to tint your resin. We're using resin tint today, which is Art Resin's tint. Um, but no matter which colorant you use, it's important to remember not to add more than 6% of the total volume of resin and hardener. Yeah. Because if you add more, then your resin will cure. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you'll see a lot, of, a lot more imperfections. So less is more. I would like to try to see what this will look like. So I'll start this one, and it's gonna be the lighter blue, version right? of that. Yeah, okay, absolutely. So you started with about four. Yeah. I'm just gonna add more drops to the resin just to get that real deep, rich color. And that's a really good point too, Rebecca, that you brought up. It's always best to start with less because you can add more if you need it. If you put too much in, you can't take it away, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Do you think I need more blue for the this lighter? Actually, yeah. that looks really pretty. I might keep it, I'll have you keep it there for the moment. Okay. I'm just trying to make mine really dark and rich because also I don't like seeing too much of the white. So a good way to test out the color too, um, if you're working with these cups, is just to nudge a little bit up the side of the cup and then you can really see the true color, right? Yeah. Because when it's in volume in the cup, sometimes it looks darker than it really is. Yeah, exactly. All right, so all our colors are mixed and ready to go. So what's first? Okay, so we are collaborating on both pieces. I'm going to start over here and just make a little sand base. On yours, we're gonna do a nice arch, similar to the piece behind oh, us. Cool. And then we're going to then go with a deep turquoise, light turquoise, and we're gonna end it off with the white, which will then turn into the wave with a break and some beautiful sea foam. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, so Good. let's start with the sand. All right. So I'm going to start pouring the sand out. Since we're filming, the resin thickened up a bit, which is great. So right now we just have a bit of a thicker pour happening right here. I'm basically spreading it around with the knife just to help even it out. And Joanne, I'll pass it over to you okay. so you can do it's just like a nice little corner edge. Okay. Yeah. It, this is a little bit thicker because we've been filming, but yeah, it's still workable. Yeah, we're still gonna work with this. It's easy to ma manipulate, that's for sure. Oh yeah, it's great. You might have noticed that this piece is taped off. And the reason being, because it does have that lip, I've taped it off just to help protect it, the edges from getting resin on it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the deep turquoise, which is a really nice consistency right now. I'm just gonna start pouring the dark part, you always wanna see the darker part at the top, just visually, if you look at any type of photography, or even when you're flying over the ocean yourself, you can always see the different colors that work throughout. And again, I like mine to pour over the side, so even though it looks a bit messy on camera, <laughs> it will look great in the finished product. So I'm pouring some darker turquoise over the lighter turquoise just because I wanted to give this more depth. The good thing is, is we're working in sunlight so I can see all of the colors in the moment and you can always add to it, which is great. And Joanne, I'm going to have to pass you over this turquoise so okay. you can start working on your side. Great. Basically with the water, I'm going to have you stay on this circular type of a pour. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna fill out the edge maybe take it just about a quarter of the way and just keep it on this nice curve because you wanna keep the same storyline. Okay. And the good thing about the knives is that they're very strong and sturdy and they can spread out the work quite well once you've poured. Oh, this color is so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna add a bit of white to the turquoise that you mixed down. Mm -hmm. okay. I just want it to be a richer color and just a bit lighter. All right. And so I'm just gonna mix this up. I'll just start pouring. I always keep the knife close to me just because I like to be able to spread it in different areas. I space out the resin as well. Even though resin's really magical, it self levels at the end of the day, mm -hmm. so I don't have much concern. I just didn't need to make sure that I leave enough for you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start spreading this mm -hmm. around and then you can just kind of copy what I'm doing but also find your own techniques. Okay. Yeah. So this is step two. So you're not leaving any like negative space, you're covering up all the A hundred percent. Okay. There is a negative space that I keep Right here, mm -hmm. closer to where I want the wave to break, I leave a tiny bit of negative space just because I don't want the bleeds of the pigments um, to marry too, too much. So I like to keep a little bit of white space, but eventually we'll cover that up with white. Right, okay, actually. you still want it to get muddy, right? I guess right. Really yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to move back to the darker turquoise, which is up here. And I just want to add a bit more of a story, you know, with the lines. And so this, this on top of the lighter turquoise just really makes it pop. 
It makes the water look a lot more realistic. They start bleeding out into each other, which is just the magic of the ocean, you know? And much like resin, you know, the water is very fluid and all moves together, including the colors. So in here I've got some drops, but you can easily just mix all of this. And it really gives you that feeling of motion. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. What a difference. It's amazing. Yeah, and this is about it. Very good. Okay, so Joanne, why don't you take your lighter turquoise mm -hmm. and start pouring. Just make sure of the sand that you don't interfere with this over here. Okay. So you just kind of want to keep that clean line over top, but you don't want any of that to drop into the sand. Gotcha. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Great job. Looks beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna use my knife then just to spread this out. And I can bring this. Bring a lot here. of that over yeah. actually. Just bring it all down. Sorry, you only have so much control with this type of technique. Mm -hmm. And so even when clients ask for a custom piece, I can never replicate. That's how one of a kind these pieces are. Right. And that's how special they are, you know? You kind of have to surrender, right? To yeah, the, <laughs> you do. To <laughs> gravity and... Exactly. So right now, the way the art is looking, it's just kind of um, starting to go upwards mm -hmm. where we want it to be a bit more shaped like this. We want it to go on that angle, similar to the sand, that kind of rounded. So you can start to manipulate out mm -hmm. the resin onto this angle. And so with the finished product, you'll see it flows all into the same motion. And we've got this nice white space, which we can also just Tidy up a little bit. We want it really close to the sand, but we also want to bring the white in sans problème. So really close, but not touching. Yeah, I mean, a lot of artists touch, and that's, you know, we're all individual, we all have our process, but I just like, because it's white, I want a bit of, I want to benefit from that white mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And so if I put it over the sand or over the blue, you'll see it become like a lighter, blue or a lighter sand color so and you can keep manipulating it in that avenue Perfect. and then if you feel inspired you can add those little little tiny strips okay. of the darker turquoise now if i don't like these big blobs are they going to sort themselves out or can i um, like manipulate them you too? can actually even if you'd like a toothpick mm -hmm. so because this is such a small scale version you yep. can toothpick that and just so kind of yeah, exactly. So if you don't like um, the blobs, they will go away if you blow dry them as well. But if you want to manipulate them on your own, and you can toothpick all the way through your piece. Cool. Okay. Good. I like that. Okay, so we are 90% done, and the 10% is where the magic happens. And so we've got this crispy white mix, and we're going to. Pour it down on the shoreline as if the wave was crashing, and then we're going to add it anywhere else we see fit throughout the ocean. Amazing. So we're going to lightly drop a thin coat of this white throughout the sand and the water where they combine. And I do a little bit of movement in the white, just again to give it that wave effect. Okay, so I'm happy with the white, and now I'm going to have you mirror what I just did, but on a bit of a different angle, and again, staying within your flow. So here you go. Okay, thank you, I'm a little bit nervous. So you're gonna go a bit thinner. Okay. All the way through. Perfect. These colors are so great. Yeah, and then you're gonna go right to the edges. Okay. And you can also move it around with a knife so you don't have to be so glued to the white. Okay. All right. Does it matter I got some in the sand? That's okay, we matter. can clean that up. So we're just gonna use the sand, sand colored knife to just quickly clean that up. There we go. Perfect. And then I can do a really long one? You, as you wish. <laughs> this 
So as you can see, this tape came in really handy, right? Because I already um, just splattered my it. splattered my white on there. Is that good? It's great. Okay. Okay. Is that enough, or do you think a little it, bit more? It's up to you. You can go for one more, a little okay. tiny one on the edge there. Okay. Great. All Good. right. So now we're going to get the blow dryer and let's make these waves crash. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start on a low level just to see how much motion we get okay. from the wave. <laughs> that is so cool. So we're getting a lot of great movement. Oh, Rebecca, that's amazing. Okay, so let's move on to the next wave. I'm using a low setting, and I'm gonna take it up a notch. And you just move it up and down and however you feel fit. As you can see, it's really bleeding out into the blue. And so a lot of the time the white can get lost. So that's why I mix the white and let it sit for longer. I see. Because the thicker I can get it, the more it sticks around mm -hmm. and it doesn't have too much movement. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's the ocean. I want to see sea foam. I want to see a wave break. And if you make it too thin, it will just disappear into the water and not even exist. Right, It'll it will just, just make like it. a light blue effect. Right. So you really want that break to happen throughout. Mm -hmm. And this is just super magical. Look at all the cool cells and lacing you're getting. It's beautiful. So I'm really happy with the results. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more manipulation we can do, but I'd like to pass you over the blow dryer. All right, <laughs> excited. <laughs> Your first step is to aim the blow dryer mm -hmm. where you want to start. Okay. So usually you want to start in this middle ground between the ocean and the sand. Okay. So you want to stay really close to the white okay. and then you want to turn it on low because you, you always want to have co complete control over where this wave is going to go. I see. As much control as possible. The white is nice and thick, so it shouldn't bleed out too far. Okay. But you just want to get an idea of, of where you're going to break it, and then it's it's up to you. I completely trust you. <laughs> That's your first mistake. <laughs> there you go. You might want to pull back a bit. Okay and then just keep going over the rest of it. And again, it's up to you how far you want the wave to break out. I see. Can I, if you want it to be a super wild wave. Can I back wave? towards the sand? You can. So it's a real science trying to figure it out is. this wave break. And again, you know, you have to understand that it's art, so it's never going to be perfect. Yep. So if I want to break up this big blob of white, can I push more? What do you think? Um, push more blue on it? So or I would more? push blue. Okay. So, so back. So you aim it here and mm -hmm. bring it back a bit. And bring it back a bit, but you have to be pretty fast with okay. it as well. You don't want to hold too much time on it. Okay. Is okay. that good enough? Yeah, that's up to you. I mean, I kind of like that break, to be honest, because it's realistic. Right. Of foam pushing up on the sand. Yeah, so. I like that too. I want more. <laughs> so, good enough? Yeah.
Cool. Great job. Yeah? Yeah, it's really mysterious. I like it. It's good controlling. And because mine is in a panel, because this is in a panel, I'm only gonna keep it on low, right? Yeah. Because it's such a small piece. Yeah, and you're you fixed. Think? You're very fixed into your space where right. I'm I'm allowed to move and drip over. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So if I want to break up this big blob here, turn it up higher. And then completely control it. Like bring it. Yep. Exactly. There you go. Okay, last one. I really actually like what happened yeah. here. Yeah, you just have to give it time to like develop the sea foam, AKA cells. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. oh my okay, next. You're an awesome student. You're an awesome teacher. Thank you. My first time. <laughs> so that one kind of has a mind of its own. It does. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Maybe we can fix that. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is just pull some back, pull some in. This is a tricky, this is a very tricky one. So go low and just kind of stay far back. Okay. Because it, this is such a little tiny temperamental corner. So you don't actually want to do too much here, the way you were with the other areas. Oh yeah, oh I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a science. Okay, so a small tip to make the wave a bit bigger and exaggerate it a bit more is to go in with a toothpick and just lift out the white throughout the sea foam. And the art is slowly curing, so it's a good time to start working and breaking out the wave a bit more. And when we say curing in the art world, it means that it's starting to dry for all of you beginners. <laughs> Just wanna fix a couple more things here. It looks beautiful. I think it's a piece de resistance. Yeah. Okay. It's finished. Yeah, it does look really good. Yeah. Yeah, yours Great looks job. beautiful too. Thank I love you so yours. Much. I'm really happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. So now we're just going to move on with torching out the little bubbles. Mm -hmm. Even though it being water, I'm okay with the little bubbles, but you know, it's good to get them out. And um, that will be it. Making oh. her look beautiful. It looks amazing. It's but so it's okay pretty. if there's bubbles in ocean water. True. <laughs> Just a quick light pass. To Great get rid of the job. bubbles. Yep. All right. That's good. So last step is to cover it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I've got a couple covers under here. Okay. Alrighty. Et voila. So this is the final step and we will see the big unveil tomorrow. Perfect, can't okay. wait. All right, we're back. It's been 24 hours. Our pieces are dry and ready to reveal. Now, Rebecca, I may or may not have peeked at my piece this morning. Oh, that's cheeky. <laughs> I wasn't actually cheating because I had to remove the tape from my piece, but um, I can't wait to show you guys because they are beautiful. Now, before we do though, Rebecca, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what inspired you to start painting ocean art and like a little bit about your journey. Yeah, sure. So I went to Brazil on a trip um, with marine biologists in Sao Paulo along the coast and we did some field work over two days. And during the field work, we were pulling all these different pieces of garbage out of the ocean and on the shoreline. And we were researching them and, and taking photos and weighing them. And in our log, we captured that some of the garbage was from China and Poland and all over the world. So it was quite devastating. And since I'm a visual storyteller and an artist, I thought I'd tell my story through that. And also, I mean, in Toronto, we have the same bad behavior on our beach side. So I'll see microplastics there. So again, I'm just trying to educate people about 
better behavior and treating our nature with respect and so that was where the inspiration came from. Amazing, I Great. love that. Thanks. And you know your passion and your love and your respect for the ocean and for your art is so visible. So thank yeah, you amazing. very much. You're welcome. Great. Now speaking of your art, Drum time roll. for the reveal. <laughs> Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Oh wow! They are beautiful. Looks like the oh ocean. Oh my gosh, Rebecca, <laughs> yours is gorgeous. Great. So Let's see nice. yours. Oh wow! What I love how the rich, the rich turquoise really took well here, and then it flowed nicely into the lighter color. And yours is gorgeous. Thank you. So you nailed the colors. Like it's perfect. I wanted to make sure that it was simple enough, and it just makes people feel really good. It's very therapeutic. It's great. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on to show us how to make your beautiful artwork. We'd love to have you back sometime. Great. Thank you. I'd love to show you more. Great. If you enjoyed this video, we have lots more on our YouTube page. Everything from featured artist profiles to lots of how-to and project videos showing you how to get started with art resin. So don't forget to hit subscribe to see more.